As a working mother with a little one, age six now, I know the pain and struggle of balancing both work and life. As an organizational psychologist, we often talk about emotional exhaustion and emotional fatigue. If we are with our kids all day, we feel emotionally tired, and that means you feel you just tapped out. You are done. You have no time for anything. If we are a working mother, we feel guilty because we don't have enough time for our children. And if、uh, if we are a stay-at-home mom, we feel judged. There are many negative assumptions about mothers who take time off to stay at home at,、uh, with their children. That they are not that motivated. That they won't be able to keep up, or they are not ambitious. And we second-guess and stress over all the parenting decisions that we make. And all too often, we feel like failures and frauds. Raising up children may be. The most important job in the world, but we couldn't put it in our CV. Shakespeare was famously said that there's nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. So, although we are not able to change the situation that we are in, we are in charge of how we interpret the event. And our perceptions will determine how we feel it, which in turn will determine the outcome. And I would like to say that my motherhood experiences also made me super good at time management, multitasking, more resilient, perspective taking, and sometimes more tough too. And I found that the lessons and the skills that I learned from home have made me more valuable in the workplace. Let me give you an example on time management. When my husband, my daughter, and myself moved to Surrey, my husband started commuting to London five days a week, and my daughter was just two and a half years old around that time. So my morning schedule is like this: every day, I woke up, I made food, I woke my daughter up, I made,、uh, I, I got her dressed, I got her fed, and then we head off to the nursery. And the worst thing is that I couldn't drive, so I had to drag my daughter to walk 40 minutes with me to the nursery. 40 minutes of walking with a two and a half year old daughter. But the good thing is that my daughter never complained. In fact, she was quite happy to walk with me, and the walking also made me and my daughter very healthy. She was singing all the nursery rhymes that she had learned from、uh, her teachers and friends、um, when we were when we were walking together. She just made my day every time I walk with her. And I would like to show you a quite interesting video that when we walk together with one of her friends. <laughs> right. So the other girl was called Afra, and we've got her parents' consent to show this video. And around that time, my daughter couldn't speak much English, so she was copying others. And when Afra asked her, "Hey, where's your backpack?" and my daughter was like, "Where's your Peppa Pig?" <laughs> around that time, around her、um, so, so during her time. Uh, at school and nursery, my daughter's English vocabulary has grown a lot, and I also learned a lot of English words and idioms from her. For example, I never used the word train track before. And at school,、uh, at home, I mean, at home, she was telling me that she was playing the train tracks at school, and I even didn't know what that meant. And one day. When we walk together, and she was pointing to the railway. Oh, and then I know. <laughs> When I was very young, I used to play the piano, and、um, I have、um, done the, all the piano grading exams in China. And when I turned 13 years old, I passed grade 10, which is the highest grade in China. And then I kind of stopped. I haven't、uh, touched a piano for a long time. 
And now my daughter is also uh, learning how to play the piano, and I'm also helping her. Um, not only do I regain my piano skills after a long absence, it's like um, after two decades of time, but also I have improved my patience as I'm teaching my, uh, my daughter how to play the piano. And I'm now much more patient than ever before. Every day I stay at home with my daughter, I feel that I'm very fortunate. And at night, when my daughter is sleeping, I have time to look up, to take a deep breath, and redefine who I am. I would like to show to my daughter that she could have any career that she wants, and she could balance the work and life very well. You cannot do it all and have it all at the same time, but I do think that you can do it all and have it all at different points in time. So during the weekends, I'm dedicated to being my daughter's mommy, and uh, we do lots of things together, like going to the bushy park to see the deers and daffodils. And on the weekdays, I work, and I started putting things on my calendar, like leaving early for my daughter's school concert, and I refuse meetings that conflict with my school runs. And if my daughter got sick, I worked from home, and my work never stopped. The truth is that um, if you have kids, and you have to stay at home, people will assume that your job skills will die. But for me, I discovered that the skills that I learned from home have made me more valuable in the workplace. For the past six years, I have done a lot of things. For example, I have published over 40 journal articles. I have secured research grants to support my research. And my teaching evaluation scores were high, and I'm the program leader taking care of my master's students. I also got promoted from lecturer to senior lecturer within just three years. And this has been a lot of work, and I couldn't have done it without the lessons that I learned from raising up my daughter, who taught me about time management, who taught me about being patient, being kind and compassion, who taught me about how to stay motivated in the face of adversity. And I discovered that the skills that I learned at home, such, such as resourcefulness, relationship building, and communication, those are the things that have made me a better employee, a better researcher, and a better educator. My research also supports the notion on the bright side of motherhood. So my collaborators and I have published an article on the bright side of motherhood, and um, in that research, we had some of the most inspirational conversations with the working mothers in the service industry. So motherhood, being a mother, has empowered them, as well as myself, to learn new knowledge, to develop new skills and abilities, including childcare abilities, including time management abilities. And most importantly, loving these little hands and feet while working has kindled the magic power inside all of us to really embrace the challenges, to develop a stronger mindset and willpower, as well as emotional intelligence. And that's what we call the bright side of motherhood. And our message to you is that if you ever think that you have lost your confidence, that you are not worthy, you don't have any courage, it's all in there. You just need to unlock it. You just need to come back to yourself and start to dream. Because if you can dream, then you can do it. And our research, our findings, also shed light on the development of female leadership in our industry. So, uh, motherhood has been traditionally considered as a barrier towards leadership. In fact, female employees comprise more than half of the service industry's workforce, yet only less than 15% of them can make it into uh, leadership positions. And the great news from our study is that motherhood experiences can enhance your time management, 
you know, prioritizing and um, multitasking skills. And all of these are extremely important for the managerial and leadership positions. I believe that our research on the uh, bright side of motherhood is really impactful to the industry because at some time point, every manager is going to have to help their women employees navigate their, uh, their pregnancy and their transition back to work. And the transition back to work is really tough. And one of the things that's clear from our research is that organizational support really matters. So talking about the bright side of motherhood, sharing this research and offering them support is really important to make sure that we make the re-entry into the workforce as successful as possible. And finally, I would like to end my talk with the quote from Anne Crittenden. If you have raised kids, you can manage anything. Thank you.